Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Hallelujah. Are we ready to go to war? It's a good day to war. Especially when your weapons of warfare are not carnal. Mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Let me introduce you to the minister for the moment, my wife, Callie. And then she's going to minister to you, but I'm going to pray before we start. I'm going to ask you all to pray with me. We'll do this together, okay? Say, Yahweh, my Father in heaven, thank you for being our Abba, our Daddy. You're holy pure just righteous awesome you're el shaddai you are almighty god thank you jesus for being our savior and deliverer you jesus are lord of all i confess we've all sinned but is born again sons and daughters We've been given the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus, your name is the name above all names. In your name and under your authority, I bind the strong man signed against me, my bloodline, and over everyone and against everyone here. I bind mind and heart binding spirit in jesus name i bind deaf and dumb spirit in jesus name i ask you my father to send your warring angels into the heavenlies and bind and cut off apollo baal asherah jezebel all her daughters all the gods, all the goddesses, all fallen angels that would oppose this work. I repent for any pride amongst us and ask you to cut off Leviathan and all the sons of pride. I ask this in Jesus' name. I bind all like spirits here in this atmosphere as well as all witchcraft sorcery hexes vexes charms and all ritual performed against this work in jesus name i break the power of all visualization every soulish prayer released against anyone here today and their families and all that pertains to them i ask you to bless anyone who's committed those sins against God's people with godly sorrow that leads to repentance in Jesus name. I thank you, thank you. Holy Spirit for the anointing that destroys yokes and thank you Jesus that you were manifested here on the earth to destroy the works of the devil. I bind and forbid all false coverings and apply the blood of Jesus to every person here, spirit, soul, and body, and to any wounds that are yet to be healed. Let Yahweh arise and the enemy be scattered and let civil war be loosed in the enemy camp. Lord, I surrender to you and then invite you, Lord Jesus, to get yourself some glory. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good afternoon.
today I'm going to be talking about uh, ministering on self-pity and the unloving spirit. So the definition of self-pity is being a victim of events and deserving of condolences. Self-pity acts like an anesthesia and a mood-altering substance that is highly addictive. Self-pity likes to take on a victim's role. It does not deal with the present problem. Self-pity likes to be self-sustaining. It's self-soothing. It likes to manipulate and to punish others. It makes others feel guilty for not bending towards it. It's a step away from anger. It controls others. It always has to place blame. It always has a reason why it can't overcome. Sometimes it blames itself. It always retreats. It always isolates. It always plays on your love. It welcomes sickness. So the focus will be on self. It doesn't want true help. It doesn't want to hear any voice other than its own. It needs to be convinced, will not trust, and it always wants to be seen as small. Whenever there's a spirit with the word self in front of it, such as self-righteousness, self-rejection, self-bitterness, idolatry is present. It always thinks it knows best. Some of the characteristics of self-pity. Self-pity is stubborn. 1 Samuel 15, 23 says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Self-pity is also one of the highest forms of pride. 1 Peter 5, 5 and 6 says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and give grace to the humble. So humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So self-pity is not founded in unworthiness but in unapplauded pride. So some uh, scriptures you can read is Colossians 1, 23 through 25, and 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28. Proverbs 18, 12 says, Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty, and before honor is humility. So some ways you can be miserable. Self-pity says, focus on me, mine, and myself. You, yours, and yourself. So some ways to be miserable is think about yourself all the time. Talk only about yourself. Use I as often as possible. Mirror yourself continually in the opinions of others. Listen greedily to what others say about you. Be suspicious of others. Always expect to be appreciated by others. Be jealous of others. Never forgive others. Trust nobody but yourself. Insist on respect from others. Demand agreement with your views. Sulk if people aren't grateful for you. Never forget a service rendered. Always be on the lookout for a good time for yourself. Always shirk your duties when you can so you procrastinate. Do as little for others as possible. Love yourself supremely. Always be selfish towards others and never be thankful. These are ways self-pity works and makes a person miserable. Some of the things self-pity stands on is self-conflict. It means that you have conflict with yourself. You're double-minded and you're contending with yourself. It's as though you're having a conflict with someone 
Only that someone is you. And there's self-accusation. Randy taught on that the other day. It needs approval. Double-minded. Accuses oneself of not being good enough, smart enough, pretty enough, thin enough. Then there's self-bitterness. If you have bitterness against yourself, you're holding a grudge against yourself. This leads to guilt and shame. You are keeping a record of your wrongs. You have unforgiveness towards yourself. It's their self-hatred. When you hate or do not like yourself, you've decided that the wrongs that you have committed are inexcusable and that you are not good enough. You direct hatred towards yourself. Their self-rejection. When you reject yourself or another person, you refuse to recognize, give affection, or the time of day to that person. When you reject something, you discard it as useless or defective. You think it or the person is inferior in quality. So self-rejection is when you feel that way about yourself. You are rejecting yourself as not good enough. Then there's self-resentment. You resent yourself for your past mistakes. Now, as I'm reading all this, if you recognize any of this in yourself, just say, Lord, forgive me. Just forgive me, Lord. Okay? And, and we're going to come out of agreement with these things. We don't want to partner with these things. And sometimes we have these things and don't even realize this is what we have. That we're going to learn a little more about it. Because I had them. I didn't know that I hated myself. But I, when, when I got started getting ministered to and got deep into some issues and wounds, I realized, man, I really, I really didn't like myself. It caused a lot of problems for me. You think it or a person's inferior in quality. Okay, so self-resentment, you resent yourself for your past mistakes keeping a record of your wrongs, and you, in a way, believe you're not worthy of forgiveness. Then there's self-pity. Self-pity is like a super glue that glues you to your past. It results in psychogenic pain and or an autoimmune diseases. And the end result of self-pity can result in insanity or death. So defeating self-pity. See, self-pity wants martyrdom and will do anything for sympathy. It's defeated by gratefulness, thanksgiving, and joy. Say, Lord, I don't want to partner with self-pity. I want to be grateful. I want to be thankful. And I want your joy. Because you say, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Self-pity zaps us of strength. Proverbs 6, 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. In everything give thanks. Thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Romans 1, 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him, not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Philippians 4, 6 through 9. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And then the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, 
and the God of peace shall be with you. I want to say this. You alone have to take action to defeat self-pity. We can pray with you. We can kick the demons out. But it's up to you. Individually, it's up to me. It's up to us to defeat this demon, this spirit. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. And the way we do that, we cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. See, self-pity is very stubborn. It will try to come back. It's always irrational. But 1 Samuel 15, 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry. Because thou has rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. See, self-pity is one of the highest forms of pride. First Peter 5, 5 and 6 says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he may exalt you in due time. So we need to submit and we need to be humble, clothed with humility. Self-pity is not founded in unworthiness, but unapplauded pride. Proverbs 18, 1 and 2. Through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. A fool has no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. Along with pointing the finger at others in judgment of what they think, real or imagine, that someone did to them, it has one operating in some of these things. Accusation, bitterness, unforgiveness, or hatred. Judgment, always judging others. Rejection and avoiding others. It likes to isolate. It'll isolate you, keep you from other people. Resenting that others were treated differently from themselves or the time wasted for the years that they weren't treated well. It can also be pointed at God. It accuses God. Self-pity accuses God. Accusing God by questioning him. Holding God in unforgiveness about their life and where he was when they were mistreated. Judgment of God leads to hatred of him and being led away into sin. Rejecting God, his ways, and his word leads to false religion or witchcraft. It resents God. If you feel you have entertained self-pity, we're going to say a simple prayer to help as we continue our understanding of these ways that have had us bound up in our soul. Say, Lord, I renounce and I repent for jumping to the wrong conclusions about what I should do, how I should act, or how I should respond to people when I feel they're saying mean things to me, or even when I'm thinking that they're being mean to me. I renounce. And repent for giving into symptoms of colds and flus. I repent for feeling stressed and anxious. I repent for saying that I'm sick and tired. I bind myself, my body, my soul, and my spirit to you, Father, to your plans and your purposes for my life. I loose all patterns 
of wrong thinking and deceptions that I have ever bought into. I loose the effects and influences of all wrong agreements that I've ever entered into. I loose all generational bondage thinking, religious bondage thinking, and cultural bondage thinking from my soul. I loose the works of the enemy from myself. I'm already feeling better. Thank you for giving me the keys to do this, the keys to your kingdom found in Matthew, Matthew 16, 19. I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom in heaven and whatsoever that shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In Jesus' name. Some other things, unloving. There's an unloving spirit. It's an antichrist spirit. The kingdom of self. There's a kingdom of God and there's a kingdom of self. So we're to love ourselves. We had a mirror up here. I wish I had the mirror. We talked about getting it, but if we... Well, and you do this when you go home, when you get to your room, to your bathroom. Look at yourself. And what do you think when you look in the mirror? What are you seeing? What do you say about yourself? How do you feel about yourself? It's important. See, we are supposed to love ourselves. It's what the Word of God says. Next to God, we should be our own best friend. If we reject ourselves, then we're calling God a liar. Not loving yourself comes from being a victim. Say, Lord, I don't want to be a victim. I want to love me the way you love me. See, an unloving antichrist spirit is anything that sets up a person, me, myself, and I above god's word for self-destruction is an unloving spirit unloving spirit antichrist spirit is the thief of god's love it comes to steal it's stealing what god says about us it is the kingdom of self-idolatry and false piety first corinthians 13 3 through 8 says and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaulteth not itself. It is not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not its own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall see, cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. The word charity in the Greek is agape, and it is a spontaneous and divine love. It is more eternal than even the gifts. There's nine ingredients here that I have here of divine love. One is patience. Love is passive. It's in no hurry, suffers long, bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. First, that's, you can read 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 7. Kindness. Is love in action. It never acts rashly or insolently. It's not inconsistent. It's not puffed up or proud. Then there's generosity. It's love in 
competition. It's not envious and it's not jealous. First Corinthians 13 and four. Then there's humility, love in hiding. It doesn't parade. There's no airs. First Corinthians 13 and four. There's courtesy, love in society, does not behave unseemingly, is always polite, at home with all classes. We're at home with everybody. Never rude and never just uh, courteous. First Corinthians 13, 5. It's unselfish, love in essence. Never selfish, sour, or bitter. Seeks only good of others and does not retaliate or seek revenge. 1 Corinthians 13, 5. Is good temper, love, and disposition. It's never irritated and it's never resentful. Righteousness. Loving conduct. Hate sin. Never glad when others go wrong. Always gladdened by goodness to others. Always slow to expose. Always eager to believe the best always hopeful and always enduring sincerity love in profession never boastful and conceited not a hypocrite always honest leaves no impression but what is strictly true never self-assertive does not blaze out in passionate anger never broods over wrongs always just joyful and truthful, knows how to be silent, full of trust, and always present. See, the unloving antichrist spirit is just the opposite of all that God has ordained us to be. We are to love God, we are to love others, and we are to love ourselves. See, the unloving antichrist spirit work is to separate us from God separate us from ourselves and to separate us from others and then have us to hate ourselves and to believe that God loves others but he doesn't love us so how does the unloving antichrist spirit find its way into our life Matthew 10 37 through 39 he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. See, the unloving Antichrist spirit works in all of the strong men and particularly in bitterness and rejection. When bitterness or rejection come about in one's life, somewhere down the road, perhaps through rejection of a parent, one begins to reject oneself and feel bitterness towards their self. The unloving antichrist spirit might be in your life because it was with your generation's past and wants to continue its ugly work in you. Abuse may bring the unloving antichrist spirit into your life as well. So what is an unloving antichrist spirit? Unloving antichrist is that spirit who does, does not want you to be touched, hugged, kissed, doesn't want you to feel loved, feel accepted, or receive any affection. I'm going to say that again. And if you feel any of these things, we're going to come out of agreement with the spirit. Unloving Antichrist is that spirit who does not want you to be touched, doesn't want you to hug or be hugged, doesn't want you to kiss, to feel loved or feel accepted or to receive any affection that might make you feel loved. It does not want you to be able to give true love to yourself, to others or to God. So here are some of the thoughts someone with an unloving spirit might have. Now, if you have ever thought any of these things, we'll just, just repent. Say, forgive me, Lord. So this spirit might say, and you would hear this in your head. You may have said it with your mouth. I'm a loser. People don't like me. I am unworthy. 
I hate myself. I can't do anything right. No one appreciates me. No one sees how hard I work. No one would miss me if I were not there. I just don't like the way I look. They always do it better than me. Say, Lord, if I've thought or said any of these things, I repent. I'm asking you to forgive me. I'm asking you to help me forgive myself. To say this, use your name. I'm going to say, Callie, say your name. I forgive you for not loving yourself. There's a hurt within that's unexplainable when you have the spirit. Romans 8, 37 through 39 says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. See, self-pity also leads one to depression. It's a feeling that you are looking for, and it feels good, we think, to feel sorry for ourselves. Say, Lord, forgive me if I've ever felt sorry for myself. See, for those who want out, we can repent. That's what we did. And ask God to remove this depressed feeling. Say, Father, I'm asking you to remove any depression that's in me in Jesus' name. Now take a deep breath and just blow it out. All that depression, go. Oppression, go in Jesus' name. Get out of God's people now in Jesus' name. Up and out. Up and out. Go. In Jesus' name. The person, let me see, where are we at? Self-pity. Hang on to him. We have to hang on to our Father in heaven for Jesus, hour by hour. If you suffered from this, you hang on to God. You just keep hanging on. He will pull you out of this the black hole that the enemy had you in. We're not in it anymore. We're coming out in Jesus' name. You take the path. Uh, he couldn't possibly, this is something else that one would say. He couldn't possibly understand what I've been through. So what can he tell me? That's pride. You don't know. The person who's making the choice to enjoy the feeling of self-pity is focusing on self, self-pity. With the combination of a food binge or drug addiction or alcohol and antidepressants, it's just that, making the choice and loving the feeling. For some, it feels good to have a pity party. I'm going to be angry. I'm going to stay angry. To be angry at someone else and medicate yourself. People medicate themselves when they're angry with food, drugs, blame others for their depression. For some, it feels legal to move into a world of no responsibility. See, there's a pattern of excuses for those who don't want to let go of depression or self-pity. It tries to find happiness in good things, nice clothes, cars, all for someone else, but not for me. It will say, this is what it might say, I'm a loser. My background is worse than others. I'm a failure. I feel like I've messed up so much. I'm a slow learner. I'm not worthy of blessing. These are lies from the enemy. When I think about it, I have never pleased anyone. This is depression and self-pity talking. My father or mother never told me I did a good job, or they never said they're proud of me. I'm never good enough. 
Most people caught up in this cycle of depression feel like the circumstances is what it is to blame for the depression. So I'm going to blame all of these people that hurt me for my depression. I don't have depression. I used to have depression, but I don't have depression anymore because I forgave. We have to forgive. We have to renounce. We have to love God. We have to love ourselves, and we have to love others. Something else one will say is that my depression is from work ending. My job ended or from doing work. I don't like my job. I don't like what I'm doing or people at work take advantage of me. Depression can be from an unfulfilled home life or someone not liking me. They'll say, I, I feel like I have been forgotten or I'm not perfect enough. People may think that the ide ideology or origin of depression is circumstantial. Most of the depressed people that we've talked to that have felt depression was mostly caused by circumstances wherein people did not approve of them or they had backed themselves into a corner. Too much work or surround themselves with too much stuff, hoarding, procrastinating, spending money on things they didn't need. They never feel good enough, pretty enough or smart enough. Say, Father, I come out of agreement of the thought that I'm not good enough, pretty enough, handsome enough, smart enough. Because, Lord, you made me in your image. So I'm smart. I have the mind of Christ. I'm handsome. I'm pretty. I'm loved. I'm good enough. You're pretty. <laughs> yeah, he said, I'm pretty handsome. That's what. <laughs> All of this is a horizontal focus on man and not a vertical focus on God. Okay. So in it's all a focus on a comparison of self to someone else, to other people. This person's stronghold is an idol and its approval of man. Proverbs 29, 5, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. The sign of the unloving Antichrist spirit's presence, the unloving Antichrist spirit is very selfish, and it's always focusing on self. It's hard to care for others. Are you always talking about yourself, your needs, and your problems? Or is it just the opposite? You never talk about yourself, but only others to keep anyone from knowing anything about you. You, don't, you do not care to hear about another's good or bad days. You will ask how their day is, but you don't even stop to listen. Because you're already thinking about what you're going to tell them about you. It's selfish. It also does not want anyone doing anything for them. It doesn't want to be served. I'll get it myself. Spirit is abusive. It needs people to work out its personality of bondage. Such as self-pity. This personality goes further than self-rejection, hatred, and bitterness. It also It is also double-minded and will drive a person into perfectionism, looking for love and looking for acceptance. It will push one into self-exaltation, triteness, and pride. It can be just the opposite and display its nature in just the opposite way. On one side of your life, you're experiencing self-bitterness, self-rejection, self-hatred. And then out in the marketplace, there's a false personality of self-exaltation, haughtiness, being a perfectionist, and, the, and you must be number one. Many who have an unloving spirit will proclaim that they don't even know who they are or where they're going. And they have confusion and disorientation. The unloving antichrist spirit leads to forgetfulness. It scrambles thought patterns and is double-minded. 
and that's in Deuteronomy 13, 1 through 4. You want to read that. James 1, 7 through 8 says, For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. We don't say, Lord, forgive me for being double-minded. I don't want to be unstable. The other, we got to know our enemy. Antichrist is behind the unloving Antichrist spirit. Strong's Concordance teaches on the word Antichrist. Greek, Antichristos, an opponent of the Messiah, Antichrist. With all of this in mind, we see that the unloving Antichrist spirit wants to take the place of Jesus Christ. Instead of love, there's hatred, self-hatred, bitterness, rejection. Self-pity is the super glue to hell. It holds us to our past. It results in pain. It results in psychogenic pain and or autoimmune diseases. Self-pity causes insanity, depression, bipolar, manic depressive, spiritual roots of deaf and dumb spirits. It's selfish and always thinking about me, 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 and mine, mine, mine. It amplifies every thought. It accuses others of not being sensitive to their needs. It feels that every person owes them everything. It drives a person in need of validation. The programming must be stopped and it must be broken. The spiritual roots of the attitude, self-conflict. Self-conflict means that you have conflict with yourself. You're double-minded and you are contending with yourself. It's as if you have a conflict with someone else. Only that someone else is you. This is the root. Self-conflict is a root to migraines and headaches when you have conflict with yourself. Self-bitterness means you have bitterness against yourself. You're holding a grudge against yourself. This can lead to guilt and it can lead to shame. You're keeping a record of wrongs against yourself and you have unforgiveness against yourself. It leads to insomnia and even suicidal thoughts. It'll make you say, I just can't forgive myself. Say, Father, I forgive me. Self-rejection causes you to reject yourself. When you reject another person, you refuse to recognize or give affection or the time of day to that person. I've read some of this, but we're going to say it again. We're going to say it again. When you reject something, it can mean that you discard it as defective or useless. You think that the person or thing is inferior in quality. Self-rejection is when you feel that way about yourself. You're rejecting yourself as not good enough. Then there's self-hatred. You have hatred towards yourself. You don't like yourself. You have decided that the wrongs you have committed are inexcusable and that you are not good enough. So you begin to direct hatreds toward yourself. And there's self-accusation. You accuse yourself of not being good enough, smart enough, pretty enough. All these problems come under the principality of the unloving Antichrist spirit. They can lead to depression, autoimmune disease, and many mental illnesses. 1 John 4 and 3 says, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. The Christian life requires a Christian to become deeply involved in correcting the problems in his or her, her own life, thereby learning to know God and himself and becoming strong in faith 
as he sees his obedience to the scripture corrections it starts bringing corrections in our body soul and spirit we have to know what the word says the word of god is what's going to heal us how we view ourselves how he sees us not how the enemy sees us then his life then our life will be a strength and encouragement to all people both saved and lost see god is love and it's god's love that's going to push out all the diseases all the demons all the spirits repentance and god's love the unloving antichrist strong man represents just the opposite of what the lord our god represents there are many scriptures uh, pertaining to God's love, how he loves us, what true love is, and what it should look like. So two of these scriptures, I'm just going to say in 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13, and John 3, 16. I read both of those. So John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. One of the things the unloving antichrist spirit leads to are addictions. Addictions don't occur because you take a drug. Say so that again. Addictions don't occur because you take a drug. You take a drug because you have an addiction. Even alternative medicines. There's some, I mean, don't get me wrong here. We take, we take supplements. We do. We take different herbs and things for inflammation. We don't go to the doctor. You know, we just, we, we take the things that the Lord shows us to take that are healing to our body, natural things. The, so there's herbs, vitamins, minerals, and other therapies can create ungodly habits. So anything that rules us is an addiction. Drugs are an altered state that attempts to stimulate, to simulate a proper relationship with God. See, our enemy has used the unloving spirit against us to steal all the love that God intended for us to receive and to give. The enemy did that. Unrepentant for sin will result in an inability to concentrate, decreased activity level, restlessness and sleep disturbance if you remain if we remain on the path of idolatry especially self-idolatry and addiction with the sin not repented for this separation from god and a feeling of hopelessness and isolation can lead to a deeper depression and into more addictive behaviors and into some equally bizarre behaviors, major mood swings, due in part to the highs and lows of antidepressants. Read Psalm 38, 17 through 18 at some, at some point. I'm going to read Psalm 38, 1 through 8. O oh Lord, do not rebuke me in your wrath, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure, for your arrows pierce me deeply and your hand presses me down. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your anger, nor any health in my bones because of my sin. It's because of my sin that we get disease, that we get infirmities. For my iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden that are too heavy for me. My wounds are foul and festering because of my foolishness. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long for my loins are full of inflammation and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and severely broken. I groan because of the turmoil in my heart. Because of my sin, and my foolishness. Continued sin can lead into deeper isolation from God, and the needy person may resort to many things in an attempt to make it in life without the foundational and structural walls that God provides. A person may try to cope by grasping at counterfeit attention or acceptance. People's attention 
and people's acceptance. It's not God's will for us to be enslaved. His goal is to be our savior, to set us free from enslaving behaviors. Many people are extremely needy. Some migrate permanently towards psychiatrists, psychologists, clinics, and doctors to help alleviate the pain in their lives, but to no avail. Sometimes these people do not know that they are looking for attention or they're looking for sympathy from mankind when what they really need is the acceptance of God. They need God's love. They need healing. They need to forgive. People who lack feel a lack of acceptance from God, as Cain felt, also fear that others do not accept or like them. The fear can manifest itself in paranoia, panic attacks, agoraphobia, self mutilization suicidal tendencies, and mania, feeling very high and then depressed, feeling very low. Luke 6.45 says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For the abundance of the heart his mouth will speak. So hearing the unloving antichrist spirit speak. This is how the victim of the unloving spirit sounds. And if you hear if any of this you, I'm going to set, read, if you hear it in yourself, say, Father, forgive me. We're going to come out of agreement with this thought pattern, this belief. No one understands me and no one even cares about me. I'm all alone. I don't think God cares for me. God must hate me or he would have healed me by now. My sins are too great for God to really forgive or heal me. Do you hear self-pity speaking there? Remember, self-pity is one of the unloving antichrist spirits. Here's some more. When I look in the mirror, what I see is ugly, and I am so ashamed. Sometimes I wish I were dead rather than living like this. I don't fit in, and I don't belong. There was a day in my life I had a... um. I had this self-pity. I was suicidal. I used to think in my mind, I wish I was jealous. I had a spirit of jealousy that took over completely. And I would say, if I could just live on a deserted island with my husband or whoever I was with, and there would be no other females around, just me and him, then I'd be happy. I wanted to be not alive. A lot of times, I didn't want to live this way anymore. What it really was. I needed God's healing. I needed his touch. I needed his love. But at the time, I didn't know it until someone taught me. I had to be taught. Once I was taught, I recognized it and could do something about it. And I had to be really active in going after and fighting this demon off of me. John 8, 35 and 36. Now the slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does remain forever. So if the son sets you free... You will be free. Say, thank you, Lord, that I'm getting set free. First John 4, 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Another spirit that it brings is insecurity. Insecurity brings with it some evils in a person's life. Perfectionism comes from fear and pride out of rejection and tries to receive love in any way that it can, even if it's trying to be perfect when only God is perfect. Great fear comes with insecurity. That is not trusting God to provide. Some of the diseases that come along with insecurity are bulimia, anorexia, eating disorders, weight gain, Sexual sin because of lack of love and feeling insecure. Galatians 5, 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The scripture, the word of God gives instruction that we are to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. The unloving spirit demands that we do not love. 
Therefore, we're unable to fulfill God's love. This is the plan of our enemy. He's against all that God says and all that God stands for. He's antichrist spirit. He's against Christ. He also wants to take the place of God. God does not respect one person above another. He loves all people. He does not love our sin, but hates sin because sin is disobedience and rebellion toward him who made us. See, God is ready to forgive us as we forgive others and repent for our sins. So what kingdom do we want to serve? Do we want to serve God's kingdom or Satan's kingdom? Anything that's against Christ is antichrist. I don't want to be there. I want to serve God. The unloving antichrist spirit manifests as a broken heart. Proverbs 13 and 12. Hope deferreth, make the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it's a tree of life. We can be programmed into the unloving spirit, which means that sometime in our life, by repeated verbal or sexual or physical abuse, we believe the lie that we're no good and just a big failure. This negative faith is able to break our hearts and cause not only our souls and spirits to fail, but also our bodies. They break down. They're affected by our thoughts and our memories concerning who and what we believe about ourselves. Jesus came to bind up the brokenhearted. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to com comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Accusing spirits accompany self-pity and hold you fast into feeling so sorry for yourself they're all reality please sin laden people full of self-pity experience an out of control feeling nothing seems to go right and the harder they try to control their surroundings the worse their surroundings get People with an unloving spirit have not experienced giving their heart completely over to God. It is uh, co it's common sense. People with the unloving spirit, especially those with self-pity, have not experienced going to God for everything. They go to their false comforters usually they have not experienced going to god so they feel they have no control over their environment some try to cope by making their world smaller and smaller and going into isolation people on the path of self-pity can become so self-focused that they cannot seem to go more than a few minutes without returning to their self-absorption Anything that you cannot lay down by an act of your will is an addiction. It does not matter what it is. It might be pornography. It might be drugs. It might be an ungodly soul tie. It could be anything. That which controls you and rules you is your master. It has become your master. The Lord is not your master when something else controls you. Something in physical creation is your Lord. Satan's kingdom uses many mechanisms to form addictions on people. Your enemy knows how to control you by your needs with something other than God. Desires of the flesh, 
Here's some addictions that follow. Illegal and legal drugs, eating disorders, drunkenness, food addiction, carbs, sugar, lust, porn, sex, masturbation, gambling, entertainment, intellect, foul language, shoplifting, victimization, scapegoat, blame, approval, perfectionism, excessive compulsive, hoarding, collecting, gossiping, workaholic, drama, blame games, competition, and false burden bearing. So what's behind an addiction? The unloving spirit is behind an addiction. It's the need to be loved. The unloving spirit is at the root of all addictions. When we have not received true love and acceptance as a foundation, we're always in search of getting that need fulfilled. The need to be loved takes us into a world of finding love in all the wrong places. And that place can include a chemical. Important insights about addictions. There are many kinds of addictions besides the more common ones like alcohol, drugs, and gambling. One can be addicted to legal or over-the-counter drugs, television, social media, news, talk radio, even certain people and certain relationships. Anything that rules us or controls us from within is an addiction. Evidence of an addiction is that we cannot lay something down by an act of our own will. The number one over-the-counter drug people become addicted to are antihistamines. Some relationships can be considered addictions because there's an ungodly bonding through codependency. These are called inordinate affections. We must realize that Satan knows how we can be controlled through our needs. If we are in relationship with anyone based on needs, it's an ungodly and it's addictive. As the addiction rules and controls us, then it becomes our master. Addictions compete with God in our lives. We either go to Father God or we go to an addiction to make us feel better when we have problems. The spiritual root of addiction is the need to be loved. Galatians 3, 1 through 3. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Addictions can bring much destruction to our lives and seem difficult to overcome. Addictions are the number two cause of divorce, according to the World Wide Web. <laughs> but through proper understanding of their mechanism and of God's word, they can be defeated. I'm proof that addictions can be defeated. I was a crack addict. I was homeless. I have been. I was on drugs from the time I was in the fifth grade until the time I was 40. Addicted to prescription drugs, street drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever you can imagine. And I was rejected as a child. I was looking for love. I was looking for something to fill me up. And when I became, when I came into the knowledge of what the word of God, what God said about me. And I repented and, and forgave all the people. And the Lord healed me of many diseases. I had a lot of the diseases that I'll talk about. I had them and the Lord healed me. And when he healed me and when I forgave, they went away. I don't have to go to the cancer center anymore and get infusions i don't have to take chemotherapy i don't have to take all the things i was taking for crohn's or ms i don't take that anymore god heal me but in order to heal me i had to do something i couldn't just stand here and say oh lord heal me i had to be active in my healing and go back to some places 
some deep places far back into my childhood from the womb, unwanted, told I was an accident, rejected, abandoned, abused, molested, raped, all that. I had to forgive each and every person, each and everything. And I had to release judgment against everybody. And then I was totally healed. But I had to do something. So I know that I... That, Addiction can leave and God can heal. So the solution is to accept and receive the Father God's love for us. See, today I know God loves me. He created me in, in my mother's womb. They may have said I was an accident. On my mother's deathbed, she did tell me you were a blessing. She reversed the curse word that was spoken on me. She told me that. And if I remember no other conversation ever in my life with my mother, that one sticks with me because I was loved. I was created by God to be here for, for such a time as this right here, to help to give someone hope. Addictions can be broken. Broken hearts can be mended. Shattered hearts can be mended. God loves us. He loved me. And I know if he loves me, he loves every one of us. He's not a respecter of person. If I can throw down the crack pipe and never look back, you can throw down whatever it is that you're facing. You can do it. God is in the healing business. He's in the restoration business. He loves us. He wants us to walk free. He doesn't want us to be connected with Satan's kingdom. All the lies we listen to from the devil, from the enemy, from ourselves, the lies we've partnered with and believe, we got to break them. We got to renounce them. And we have to be active. And when they come back and try to, because the enemy will come, oh, you've got your hair. This is hard. No, I bind you, pain. I rebuke you. And when something tries to come back, I say, Lord, have I opened the door? Is, have I, is there sin? Did I do something? Have I, am I offended? Did I get offended? Did I hurt? Did something happen that you're not pleased with? Did I, have I sinned? And I clear the ground. Because when we sin, we open the door for everything that left to come back. So we have to walk holy. We have to be holy. We have to walk the way God wants us to walk. What does he want me to do? Does he want me to give someone a dirty look? No. And do we get opportunities to give someone a dirty look in the net? Yes, we do. But we have to say, no, Satan, devil, nope, not doing it. I'm going to walk in love. I rebuke the thought. I cast down the vain imaginations. And I'm going to walk in holiness no matter how I'm feeling at the moment. And I take control. Because I have the Holy Ghost inside of me. I say, and I, if I'm feeling too, this is too much for me, I pray in tongues. Because he'll rise up in me and the love of God will push those thoughts out. Push that. But we have to be active. We have to be active. We have to quote the word. We have to know the word. We have to be in relationship. Once we're in relationship with God, we start knowing. And I know now the devil's a liar. And there is nothing anyone can say or do to me today to make me feel worthless again. I'm not junk. I'm not trash. I'm not a mistake. I'm not a crack addict. I'm not a recovering addict. I have been delivered. So what opens up people up for an addiction? Evil spirit of addiction come in through a broken heart. Most often, the person was abused or neglected as a child and definitely not nurtured by their mother or someone did not love them in the way they should have. This leads to abandonment issues, whether real or imagined. My parents were both in the home, but I was totally spiritually abandoned by them. I was put into a room to take care of me, and I didn't, have, I didn't feel like I could go to my mom or my dad and feel safe and tell them what I was feeling, I couldn't do that. So, kept it in, medicated myself at a very young age. Had a broken heart. Through neglect or being ignored, that'll open you a person up for addiction. Conceived in drunkenness. 
through a generational familiar spirit that passed down through family lines is another way. And I had that as well. Through victimization, whether verbal, emotional, physical, sexual, and or trying to seek love and approval through drivenness and affection and perfectionism. Additionally, our serotonin levels are affected when we feel unloved. And so then we feel even worse and even more depressed, which only deepens the addiction cycle. Then there's spiritual bewitchment. The gospel is a simple gospel. Matthew 22, 37 through 40 says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. See the addictions, I've said it, but I'm going to say it again. They're rooted in the need to be loved. You stand complete in the gospel by accepting God's love and receiving the love you need. Say, Father, I receive your love. We believe a lie. If we think God doesn't love us and that if we do not love ourselves, and that we do not, if we believe that others don't love us, we're believing a lie. By not loving God, yourself and others on these three levels, we have fallen into Satan's, his gospel trap. He's got his gospel too. If you would love if you would love God, love yourself, love others, and be complete in that, you would never need to find love in any of the wrong places. However, your enemy knows that if he can get you to a place where you do not feel like you're loved by God or that you aren't loving yourself or others or you're not sure about your neighbor, then he can get you to start looking outside for something that will fix it. Spiritual bewitchment is dangerous because the enemy makes it look and sound like God. Your spirit man craves spiritual contact. The open door is the foundation for false religion, heresies, and occultism in the church. Spiritual bewitchment can enter our lives through doctrines of devils. The need to be loved is built within us from creation. The ability to give and receive love is part of our creation. But because of the breakdown in our families, we have not loved our children well. We have not loved our husbands well. And we have not loved our wives or the men well. We have not, we now have the rage of rejection and the bitterness of not being loved. So spiritual bewitchment says God does not love you. You do not love yourself and no one loves you. When you buy that lie because of the sins of others around you, you have spiritual bewitchment. Say, Lord, I renounce and repent for coming to agreement with spiritual bewitchment. Then there's altered state of mind. Chemically altered states of consciousness violate creation. Altered states of consciousness defy what creation's all about. If God wanted you high he would have created your body to do that naturally. If God wanted you chemically altered, he would have created you in a different chemical state. Your enemy knows that he can alter your chemistry by the way you feel about yourself. He then gives you chemicals to alter that altered state of consciousness into a chemical peace. However, it is not the peace that Jesus gives us. Jesus said this in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The Bible says perfect peace belongs to those whose minds and hearts are stayed on the Lord. Isaiah 26, 3, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee drunkenness it's anything that alters the mind it does not just include alcohol it can include and this is not an exhaustive list but illegal drugs prescription drugs 
alcohol, sugar, carbs, caffeine, tobacco, nicotine, herbs, chocolate, overeating, yeast, like beer and bread. So why do people use these substances? They can't stand life and how it feels to never have been loved properly, so they have to escape. This is the main root of addiction. They seek fulfillment in substance instead of believing in God's love, grace, and healing, like needing a glass of wine just to unwind. They escape into fornication if they are not married in order to get the dopamine release. They escape into adultery if they're not married in order to fill a void. They escape into pornography. 90% of everyone who is into pornography is male, and it involves 100% masturbation. The power of the man's body belongs to the wife, not his own hand, and his addiction problem. The alcohol, I say that about the men, but that women are addicted to pornography as well. We've seen many, many women addicted to pornography. We've seen many, many healed and delivered from addiction. And this starts at a young age. We've worked teenage men, women and men, boy ministries. And it's same sex attraction and pornography is very... Um, it's very huge in women, girls as well. Drunkenness takes you into a place of non-reality. Jesus can bring deliverance. This is the good news. Jesus can bring deliverance. A person who has a drink and doesn't get drunk might not hate themselves. But a person who takes a drink and gets drunk, they drink to get drunk. They hate themselves. They may not think they hate themselves. But why would someone do that to their body? Why would we do that to our body? That's abusing our body. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost right here. And we are not supposed to, to do things like this to corrupt it. In addictions, especially alcohol, you have, an, you have the inherited curse. Many families inherit rejection unloving, unclean spirit, and the need to be loved. When you find someone who is into drugs, either legal or illegal or is an alcoholic, and binging and out of control, you can look at them with great authority and know that they are like a hamster on a wheel going round and round with no idea how to get off. That was me. I, the, when I hit the crack pipe the first time, it took me over. I had no control. I felt it, sensed it. I could describe it, and it had me. It had control of me, and it took a miracle of God. It took a police officer pulling me over, arresting me. I told the police officer, the Holy Spirit has sent you to get me. Put me in a padded cell, but it was the beginning of the end of that because that's when I was... That's when I had just met my husband, who was then just a mentor, and he was learning deliverance, and he brought deliverance to me, and he helped me. He helped me get through that, but Jesus, it was Jesus. It was Jesus. It was Jesus and him. I had nobody left. Nobody in my family. I had uh, I had two children, but they were high school and college. Saw their mom as a crack addict. They couldn't help me. They didn't know how to help me. There was nobody in my family left to help me. I became homeless. And the Lord sent his man, who was a stranger to me, to start binding the strong men over my life, to pray to break the addiction off of my life, to pray, have me pray prayers. The very first prayer was the prayer to forgive myself. And when that happened, then I got arrested, and I knew that I knew that it was God, and I was more free than I'd ever been sitting in a jail. I loved every minute of being there. I got close to God. 
The police officer thought I was nuts. But that's okay. That's okay. I knew it was God. Pride, in most cases, keeps us from ever being able to admit that we have a problem. It's a lying spirit that comes out of rejection. I thought I could quit any time I wanted at one point. Then, with that part, I knew I couldn't. But until then, I, I could quit whenever I want. I, or if I, if a lying spirit, I got pulled over or something. Oh, I just had two. There was a lying spirit. It's always two. At least it was for me and for a lot of people. But it's... um rejection it's just just rejection De deuteronomy 18 9 through 13 when you come into the land which the lord your god's giving you you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations there shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire or one who practices witchcraft or a soothsayer or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer or one who conjures spells or a medium or a spiritist or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations of the Lord your God, he will drive them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. I just thank you, Lord. Say, Lord, forgive me for sin, for addictions, for turning my back on you, for turning to other things. Instead of you, forgive me. I just thank you, Lord, that because of your forgiveness, that I am blameless before you. I've been washed clean. You love me, and I can walk in holiness. I don't have to look back at all the things I did and have shame and guilt and condemnation. I can walk upright before you. You've created me, and I thank you, Lord, that you have a destiny for me, and you set me free so I can help others be set free. You have an assignment for me, and I want to walk in it. I want to walk in authority with it. I want to know that I know that it's all about you and the devil's a liar. And when he tries to tell me different, I'm going to tell him, shut up, devil. I belong to Jesus. I'm following God. I renounce you. I want nothing more to do with you. You're my past. So get behind me, Satan, in Jesus name. We're almost done. We're almost done here. Then there's the flesh. So the desires of the flesh include every worldly desire. So we're to put to death our members, which are on earth. The desires of the flesh include fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you also once walked when you lived with him. We must put off all of these things. Say, Lord, I put off all anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language in Jesus' name. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him, as stated in Colossians 3, 5 through 10. Mortify, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil. I have these. That. Com com there you go. And covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in which ye also walked sometime when you lived in them. But now ye also put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. 
lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. The desires of the flesh include the iniquity accumulated in our hearts since the days of Adam. These are the desire to do those things which are evil before God. Say, Father, I no longer want to desire the evil things. I want nothing to do with them. I, want, I do not want to sin in Jesus' name. I want to be pleasing to you and walk in holiness. It is the desire, the flesh, the desire to worship idol gods, such as many material things, the world, your wife, your children, drugs, alcohol, your car, your house, the works of your hand, your stomach, the God of the belly, your sleep, your special time, entertainment, sports, your mind, your abilities, your talent, your skills, your illness, your grievance, your complaining, your sharp tongue, your looks, your collection, your opinion, and your good works. To enter the kingdom of God, we must give up everything that keeps us from yielding and submitting and relinquishing control to God in the deepest, innermost portions of our heart. That's our personality and our soul, which is our mind. Okay. Some diseases. I'm going to talk about some diseases, and then we're going to go through some deliverance. Some diseases caused from the unloving antichrist spirit. This is just a partial list of the diseases that come out of an unloving spirit. There are many. For example, all the autoimmune diseases have a possible main root coming out of the unloving spirit kingdom. All addictions come out of the unloving spirit kingdom and occultism. Many psychological diseases have a root in the unloving spirit kingdom. Body weight issues with a spiritual root, both overweight and all food disorders, like anorexia and bulimia, have a primary root in the unloving spirit kingdom. Some things that come out of self-conflict, conflict within yourself is lupus, addictions, migraines, and psoriasis, coupled with issues of self-worth and value. Some of the issues that come out of uh, self-worth and value are addictions, candida, impotence, psoriasis, rebellion, weight gain, and anorexia. Some issues that come out of self-hatred, allergies, anorexia, bulimia, autism, diabetes, prostate issues, psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, dieting, endometriosis, Graves disease, Hashimoto's disease, rosacea, shingles, sarjoins disease, hypoglycemia, lupus, migraines, multiple sclerosis, spondylosis, kleptomania. All autoimmune diseases, non-bacterial inflammation like prostatitis and cystitis, all from self-hatred, overspending, addicted to spending, chronic fatigue syndrome, some issues that come out of self-rejection or Crohn's disease, endometriosis, non-bacterial inflammation, kleptomania, rebellion, ADD, shingles, and weight issues. As you can see, some of these were mentioned more than once as they have more than one set of spiritual roots or principalities. For example, rejection and unloving working in conjunction together. This is why it is so important for you to be aware of bitterness and its armor and to make sure that no root of bitterness is there to spring up and defile yourself and others. In addition, unloving antichrist spirits in the form of self-hatred, guilt, and self-accusation can cause a neurotransmitter imbalance in serotonin and other neurotransmitters, causing many psychiatric illnesses. Spiritual issues like self-pity, they can keep diseases like environmental illness, 
allergies and all manner of other issues in place. It's like the glue. So the unloving spirit is a thief of God's love. Pride makes us feel like our problems are caused by others. We have all the answers and do not need ministry. And people think that you have a lot of low self-esteem. So we're going to renounce these spirits and um, we're going to do some uh, deliverance. Y'all ready? Okay. Say, Father, I repent. Now, some of these things you may not have done. It could have been a generational thing, but we're going to say, and we're going to go through it. We're going to get rid of it. Say, I repent for adultery, for addictive relationships, for addictions, attention getting, broken heart, competition, complaining, confusion, division, doubt and unbelief, double-minded, drivenness, drunkenness, dread. Enabling, envy and jealousy, emptiness, excessive talking, nervousness, fabricated personality, false piety, false piety, fear of failure, fear of man, fear of abandonment, fornication, guilt, insecurity, I and I will. Can't say no, even to self. Isolation, lack of confidence. Now, now I'm just going to start casting them out. Y'all just come in agreement and will them out. So in the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of adultery to go. Go, get out of God's people. Addictive relationships, go. Addiction, eating, smoking, drinking, go. In Jesus' name, pornography, go. In Jesus' name, attention getting, broken heart, go. We break your power. Get out of God's people now, go. Competition, take a deep breath, blow it out, get rid of it, go. Complaining, all confusion, division, go. Up and out. Come out of God's people in Jesus' name. Doubt and disbelief. Drunkenness. Dread. Enabling. Go. We break your power. Up and out in Jesus' name. Up and out of God's people. Emptiness. Envy and jealousy. We break your power in Jesus' name. Up and out of God's people. Up and out. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Blow it out in Jesus' name. All excessive talking and nervousness, go. We break your power up and out in Jesus' name. Out of God's people, go. Go now in Jesus' name. Go. Fabricated personality, false piety, fear of failure, fear of man. We break your power up and out in Jesus' name. Up and out of God's people, we break your power. Go, go, go in Jesus' name. Fear of abandonment, we break your power. Come up and out in Jesus' name. Fornication, guilt insecurity we break your power in jesus name up and out out of god's people i will i and i will i can't say no even to myself go we break your power go in jesus name isolation lack of confidence go now in jesus name we break your power say i repent for laziness loneliness loser spirit lust mistrust need for approval not important, not needed, opinionated, pornography, perfectionism, performance to receive love, procrastination, programming, rebellion, religious spirit, separation, shame, victimization, wounded emotions, unclean, feeling unloved, selfishness, self-absorption, self-admired, self-accusation, self-annihilation. I wish I did not exist. I repent. Self-appointed. I repent for self-anger, self-bitterness, self-blindsided, and self-centeredness. I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus. I command laziness to go, go loneliness, all loneliness, go loser spirit out of God's people. We break your power, lust and mistrust. Go now 
go in Jesus' name out of God's people, the need for approval. We break your power up and out of God's people. Take a deep breath, blow it out, get it out, will it out, go now. Not important, not needed, go in Jesus' name. Pity party, go in Jesus' name. Opinionated, pornography, perfectionism, out of God's people now, go. Cough for me, take a big cough, go, go in Jesus' name. Get out of God's people performance to receive love go we break your power procrastination programming rebellion religious spirit go we break your power all religious spirits go get out of god's people now in jesus name we break your power all separation and shame we break your power go go blow it out in jesus name we break your power go in jesus name shame victimization go in Jesus name, wounded emotions, we break your power, unclean, feeling unloved, go, all selfishness, we break your power, up and out, up and out, go, get out of God's people, self-absorption, self-admired, self-accusation, go, in Jesus name, we break your power, take a deep breath, blow it out, go, go now, in Jesus name, self-annihilation, wish I didn't exist, go, we break your power, death, Go, spirit of death, go, spirit of murder, go, spirit of abortion, go, out of God's people, go, in Jesus' name. Self-appointed, we break your power. Self-anger, all wrath, bitterness, go, self-bitterness, go. Self-blindsided, self-centeredness, we go, we command you to go. Get out of God's people, we break your power. Take a deep breath, take a deep breath and blow it out. Go, go now, in Jesus' name, go now. In Jesus' name. So I repent for self-comparison, self-condemnation, self-conflict, self-consciousness, self-consuming, self-criticism, self-deception, self-degradation, self-doubt, self-exaggeration, self-exaltation, self-made, did it on my own self-hatred, self-idolatry, self-indulging. I repent for self-mutilation, tattoos, piercings, cuttings, self-murder, suicide. I repent, self-neglect, self-pity, self-pleasing, self-pride, self-questioning, self-resentment, self-sabotage, self-torment, self-rejection. I repent, self-belief, self-belief, self-unforgiveness, self-violence, self-rage, and self-worship. I repent. Now I'm going to pray. Come out in Jesus' name. All you self-comparisons up and out in Jesus' name. Self-condemnation, self-conflict, go. We break your power. Self-consciousness, we break your power. Go now in Jesus' name. Self-consuming, self-criticism, go now in Jesus' name. Self-deception, self-degradation, go in Jesus' name. Up and out, take a deep breath. Go, 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 get out in Jesus' name. Self-doubt, self-exaggeration, self-exaltation, go. Self-made, go, did it on my own. Out of God's people, we break your power now in Jesus' name. All pride, go, pride, go, out of God's people in Jesus' name. All self-hatred, self-idolatry, go in Jesus' name. Self-indulging, self-utilization, we break your power, go in Jesus' name. Self-murder, suicide, go. We break your power up and out. Take a deep breath, go now in Jesus' name. Up and out, get out of God's people right now. Say, Lord, if it's not supposed to be in me, I don't want it. Now go in Jesus' name. Self-murder, go. Self-neglect, self-pity, go in Jesus' name. Self-pleasing, go in Jesus' name, out of God's people, self-pride, self-questioning, self-resentment, up and out, take a deep breath, take a deep breath, get it out, get it out now, in Jesus' name, go, 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 in Jesus' name, self-sabotage, self-torment, self-rejection, up and out of God's people, go now, in Jesus' name, give me a big cough, go, go, in Jesus' name, all self-rejection, go, unloved go in jesus name self-pity up and out we break your power we renounce you up and out now in jesus name all self-belief self-unforgiveness we break your power go go now in jesus name 
Self violence and rage, we break your power. Self worship, we break your power. Up and out, up and out. Now, take a deep breath, blow it out, blow it out. All squatters go in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. One last deep breath. Go out of God's people. Go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I said, Thank you, Lord, for freedom. Thank you for perpetual deliverance. Thank you, Lord, that I leave here a changed person, more in your likeness than when I got here. Thank you, Father, for loving me. Say, Lord, I love me. I love me. Thank you for creating me. I'm a gift to me from you, and I thank you for that gift. Thank you, Lord that I'll look in the mirror and say, I love you. This is what I want y'all to do. I want you to go to your mirror, go to your bathroom, here, wherever you're at when you go home, and say, I love you, and I forgive you. Just tell yourself, I forgive you. And I give you, say, I give myself permission to thrive, to walk in freedom. I give myself permission to walk in holiness in Jesus' name. I give myself permission to love myself, to love you, and to love others for the rest of my days. And when the enemy tries to come in, what are you going to say? Get behind me, Satan. Shut up, devil, in Jesus' name.